Introduction This video is a response to YouTuber Bad Empanada on the subject of China's military incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone. See the links in the video description. I strongly recommend his video essays, especially on Churchill and the Bengal famine, Columbus, anti Americanism, Che Guevara, the Chinese oppression of Uyghurs, Peru's Shining Path guerrilla movement, and pretty much any of his videos on South America. However, Bad Empanada and I disagree on Taiwan. I believe Taiwan belongs to its indigenous people and is currently under occupation by an invading settler colonist government which placed Taiwan under a military dictatorship for half a century. Bad Empanada seems to think all Taiwan's indigenous people have already been exterminated and definitely believes Taiwan belongs to the People's Republic of China. While he recognizes a Chinese military dictatorship previously invaded Taiwan, he believes Taiwan should be retaken by the People's Republic of China because it belongs to them. Here are some of his statements on the topic. China's claim on Taiwan is as valid as pretty much any other claim in the entire world today, possibly even more so. Because what happened is the Chinese Communist Party won a civil war and the losing side of that civil war then took refuge in Taiwan and installed themselves as basically like a competing sort of government. The, the moving of the, um, the Republic of China government to Taiwan was an inherently violent act. It was an invasion. They, 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 literally, they literally immediately massacred both indigenous peoples and non-indigenous people who had been living there for, for objecting to them taking it over. It was a violent invasion and a theft of territory. That's now, like, you know, 60 years later, something that we apparently just have to accept, something that China apparently just has to accept. The point is that China's claims on Taiwan fit perfectly into established sort of international law. And by the way, it's illegal to implant populations in occupied territory. So there's some legal ambiguities there as well. Anyway, China-based invasion, invasion of Taiwan when? In contrast, I don't believe China has any right to Taiwan, just like I don't believe the United States has any right to Hawaii and Puerto Rico, both of which it claims by right of conquest, or even to the territory it annexed from Mexico and forced Mexico to cede. I believe those territories belong to their indigenous people and not to the settler colonist government which invaded them. If the people of those territories were insisting on independence and the US was threatening them with a military invasion, I would have absolutely no objection to a foreign power such as China selling them armaments. However, Bad Empanada and I both agree that the US alliance with Taiwan is cynically motivated by US imperialism and a desire to use Taiwan as a de facto military base in part of its attempt to contain China. Likewise, we would both agree that Taiwan deliberately maintains a public relations campaign aimed at playing to US interests in an attempt to stay relevant to US geopolitical aims and consequently benefit from the extension of US military power in the region. It also needs to be acknowledged that the 1979 Taiwan Relations Act does not oblige the US to defend Taiwan militarily, though it apparently does require the US to, quote, provide Taiwan with arms of a defensive character, end quote. It should also be understood that despite the false claims of various news articles, China has not encroached on Taiwan's sovereign airspace. The air defense zone under question is a totally separate issue to Taiwan's airspace. I'm not sure if Bad Empanada supports any kind of self-determination for Taiwan's indigenous people or for the Taiwanese people who were living on Taiwan before the Han Chinese settler colonizers invaded and took over in 1949 because he never mentions this. However, we both question the legitimacy of a settler colonizer group invading a region and claiming independence from their nation of origin on the basis of self-determination after a mere 50 years. At least, settler colonizers who did this in the past typically had the courtesy to wait much longer, 259 years in the case of Canada, 169 years in the case of the United States, and 113 years in the case of Australia. There are exceptions, however. The European settlers of New Zealand took only around 37 years to transition from the earliest colonial settlements to independent self-government, and Liberia's African-American settler colonizers took only 27 years to colonize Liberia, subject the indigenous people, and transition from colony to independent nation. 
But I am not particularly interested in the claims of the settler colonizers who invaded Taiwan in 1949. I am interested in the self-determination of the people who had already lived there for centuries before the invasion. This video addresses various claims Bad Empanada has made about China's incursion into Taiwan's air defense zone, covering these topics. 1. Taiwan's territorial claims and China. 2. Claim. Taiwan's air defense zone extends over China. 3. Claim. China's aircraft only fly 200 kilometers from China. 4. Claim. Taiwan is the only source for the incursions it reports. 5. Claim. China claims part of Taiwan's air defense zone. 6. China's incursions into Korea and Japan's air defense zones. Use the timestamps in the video description to navigate the content. Taiwan's territorial claims and China. Bad Empanada's knowledge of Taiwan's history is incomplete, to put it mildly. He even believes Taiwan's government still claims all of China's territory, even though Taiwan actually abandoned those territorial claims years ago. Here are his words. Taiwan still literally claims all of mainland China in its constitution. China's claim on Taiwan is as valid as pretty much any other claim in the entire world today, possibly even more so. Because what happened is the Chinese Communist Party won a civil war and the losing side of that civil war then took refuge in Taiwan and installed themselves as basically like a competing sort of government. We're talking about China claiming a territory of a country that literally also claims China and claims to be the legitimate government of China legally in its constitution. In an article from back in 2008, Lin Zhoushui, former member of Taiwan's Legislative Yuan and member of the Democratic People's Party, which is currently in power as of October 2021, explained that the Republic of China had already renounced its previous territorial claims by, quote, relinquishing its territorial claims on the mainland and applying its constitution only within the bounds of the Taiwanese islands, end quote. Lin explained that over the years, Taiwan's government has taken numerous actions demonstrating its abandonment of its previously claimed territory, including, quote, publicizing nautical charts on which Taiwan's sovereignty claims are limited to the waters of the Taiwan and Ponghu Islands, end quote, as well as, quote, annulling Taiwan's provincial government so the territory can no longer be regarded as a Chinese province, end quote, and, quote, making amendments limiting the jurisdiction of Taiwan's constitution to the islands of Taiwan, Ponghu, Jinmen, and Matsu, end quote. Bad Empanada also seems unaware that the Republic of China's constitution does not make any claim on the territory of Taiwan. In fact, Taiwan was not even part of Chinese territory when that constitution was written in 1946 in China, before the rebel KMT government fled China and invaded Taiwan. At that time, Taiwan was legally Japanese territory, having been ceded to Japan by China's Qing Dynasty government in the 1895 Treaty of Shimonoseki, when China gave up Taiwan to Japan, quote, in perpetuity and full sovereignty, end quote. Japan did not cede sovereignty of Taiwan until the 1952 Treaty of San Francisco. During this time, both foreign and Chinese maps showed Taiwan as a territory belonging to Japan, not China. So the Republic of China's constitution does not make any formal specific claim on the territory of Taiwan. The only part of the Republic of China's constitution even making any reference to Chinese territory is Article 4, which merely says, quote, the territory of the Republic of China within its existing national boundaries shall not be altered except by a resolution of the National Assembly, end quote. The statement, within its existing national boundaries, refers to the national boundaries of China in 1946, which did not include Taiwan, though the KMT had already installed a provincial government to rule Taiwan in anticipation of receiving it from Japan. Consequently, the Republic of China's own constitution excludes Taiwan from the national boundaries of China and from the Republic of China's historic territorial claims. However, by 2005, even this clause of the constitution had been annulled by Taiwan's government, 
which no longer claimed China's historic territory. Now let's look at Bad Empanada's specific claims. Claim: Taiwan's air defense zone extends over China. Bad Empanada starts by citing a BBC article with the title "Taiwan says dozens of Chinese planes entered defense zone" and comments. Thus, there's a bit of a problem with with Taiwan's air defense zone. You see, when they say that Chinese planes enter Taiwan's air defense zone, what they're not telling you is that half of Ch- half of Taiwan's air defense zone is literally mainland China. This is an unusual statement, since the BBC article from which he is citing contains a map of Taiwan's air defense zone, which clearly shows half of the zone covering territory in mainland China. So the article from which he quotes literally shows exactly the information Bad Empanada claims it is concealing. See the images on screen now. He then makes this claim: sixty percent of this zone that Taiwan claims, which by the way is not actually an exclusive zone by any means, it's just a claim that they make. It's not legally enforced in any in any way, shape, or form, even internationally. So like sixty percent of it overlaps with China, and about forty percent of it literally is Chinese land. This is a good example of looking at a map and not understanding what you're seeing because you're unfamiliar with the region and its history. First of all, it must be understood that Taiwan did not define this air defense zone. Mercedes Trent, former research associate for the Defense Posture Project at the Federation of American Scientists, explains that Taiwan's air defense zone, just like those of Korea and Japan, was originally drawn up in the early 1950s by the United States. These three air defense zones were subsequently transferred to and have been managed independently by each country, respectively. Bad Empanada claims that due to Taiwan's air defense zone covering so much of the Chinese mainland, Taiwan can claim an incursion of its zone any time Chinese aircraft fly over China's own territory in these regions. However, careful observers may notice that he never shows any evidence that Taiwan ever does this. He certainly never shows us any map from Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense, which identifies Chinese planes flying over this territory as having breached the Taiwan air defense zone. Here's one map he shows from May 21 this year, 2021. Here's another, also from this year, from October 1st. Here's another, also from this year, from October 4th. And here's another from this year, also from October 4th. There's a common thread among all these maps. None of them show Taiwan identifying flights over Chinese territory as breaching the Taiwan air defense zone. In fact, none of them record any flights over the Chinese territory contained within Taiwan's former air defense zone at all. This suggests Bad Empanada's opinion about their air defense zone isn't true. Looking at the maps more closely, we can see clear evidence that Bad Empanada's interpretation is simply wrong. The map on screen now shows the flight path of Chinese aircraft over what is referred to as the median line, a geographical demarcation between China and Taiwan, tacitly recognized by both parties. These aircraft must have flown from the Chinese mainland, but Taiwan's map doesn't track their flight path until they approach very close to the air defense zone, until they approach very close to the median line, and follows them as they cross over the median line to the Taiwan side before they cross back over. To return to the Chinese side, these maps show very clearly that Taiwan does not track any Chinese flights which are over any of the territory of the Chinese mainland. Anyone looking at these maps carefully would see this and should start asking why this is. If 60% of Taiwan's air defense zone is over the Chinese mainland, why does it ignore all flights in that area? Why does it ignore Chinese flights in the majority of its technically defined air defense zone? The answer is that although the air defense zone originally drawn for Taiwan by the U.S. technically does include part of China's landmass, since 1955, Taiwan and China have tacitly observed the so-called Taiwan Strait Median Line, an imaginary line differentiating the territory from China from the territory of Taiwan. Taiwan has redrawn its air defense zone behind that line, so it's much smaller than the original zone drawn up by the U.S. in the early 1950s. And it does not cover any of China's territory.
It's not difficult to find images in mainstream media showing how Taiwan's formally defined and monitored air defense zone is actually far smaller than the technical boundaries originally drawn up by the US in the early 1950s. On screen now is an image showing that Taiwan's formally defined and monitored air defense zone is behind the Taiwan Strait median line and covers none of the Chinese mainland. Here's another such image, again showing Taiwan's formal air defense zone excludes any Chinese territory and is behind the Taiwan Strait median line. Here's a third image, again showing Taiwan's formal air defense zone excludes any Chinese territory and is behind the Taiwan Strait median line. Again, this information is not difficult to find. If anyone is showing you an image of the technical boundaries of Taiwan's air defense zone as originally defined in the US in the 1950s, and isn't telling you that Taiwan itself doesn't formally recognize and monitor those boundaries, and that Taiwan's formal air defense zone is much smaller, doesn't cover any Chinese territory, and is behind the Taiwan Strait median line, it's very likely they just don't know. That is why, when Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense publishes data on Chinese military flights into Taiwan's air defense zone, it does not count any flights over the Chinese mainland or within the technical borders originally drawn by the U.S. outside the Taiwan Strait median line. In fact, the area Taiwan formally recognizes and monitors as its actual air defense zone is even smaller than the area covered by the Taipei Flight Information Region, a civil aviation boundary within which Taiwan's airports provide navigation, flight information, and flight alerts to any civilian aircraft entering it, regardless of their country of origin. Nations all over the world have flight information regions, which are used to assist civilian aircraft passing through them. On screen now is an image showing the technical boundaries of Taiwan's original air defense zone, as drawn up in the 1950s, as compared to its formally recognized and monitored air defense zone now, which is clearly behind the Taiwan Strait median line, and compared to Taiwan's flight information region. To make it clearer, on screen now is the same image with Taiwan's formally claimed and monitored air defense zone highlighted with a red line. Already, we can see it's at least 45% smaller than the original air defense zone, and it's positioned behind the Taiwan Strait median line. Now let's make a further comparison. On screen now is the same image with Taiwan's formally claimed air defense zone highlighted with a red line and Taiwan's civil flight information region highlighted in blue for comparison. You'll note that Taiwan's formally claimed and monitored air defense zone is significantly smaller than even its own civil flight information region. So although the original borders of Taiwan's air defense zone cover part of Chinese territory, Taiwan does not recognize these as part of its formally claimed, managed, and monitored air defense zone now. That's why Bad Empanada can't show you any images of Taiwan claiming Chinese flights over Chinese territory or within the original air defense zone past the median line are incursions. He never actually says explicitly that they do this, he just implies it very strongly. However, it isn't true. Taiwan never represents Chinese flights into those areas as incursions of its own air defense zone. Additionally, although air defense zones are informally defined areas which are not part of international law, Taiwan's air defense zone is recognized by the United States, by Korea, and by Japan. In fact, it's even recognized, at least tacitly, by China. Claim. China's aircraft only fly 200 kilometers from China. Bad Empanada shows one map of Chinese flights from one day and makes these statements. Like, where do these planes actually go? Where's the radar? Oh, here we go. Flight path of PLA aircraft. Dude, what, they're like literally on the edge? Not even close, not even actually close to Taiwan. What are they like? A couple hundred, a, a, a few, like they're like a couple hundred kilometers from mainland China. This, this is threatening Taiwan. Instead of a sample set of one, let's try a broader sample set. Let's look at a selection of Chinese military flights from June 15th 
September 5th and October 1st to 4th, 2021. On screen now is a map showing that within that time period, there were multiple Chinese incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone. Since the map also conveniently provides a scale line of 200 kilometers, we can see very clearly that on June 15th and October 1st to 4th, numerous Chinese flights traveled up to 500 kilometers away from China, not 200, well past Taiwan, and came well within 200 kilometers of Taiwan's territorial land. In fact, we can see that on those days, some Chinese flight paths were less than 100 kilometers from Taiwan's land territory. And this is a sample of just six days, although at least it's six times the size of Bad Empanada's sample set of a single day. Claim. Taiwan is the only source for the incursions it reports. Bad Empanada makes this statement. And of course, the only actual source for this is Taiwan itself. Bad Empanada doesn't provide any evidence for this claim, which would have been difficult since it isn't true. I don't think he actually fact-checked this. These flights and flight paths reported by Taiwan have been acknowledged by China itself. In fact, Chinese media even reports on these flights and flight paths with pride. Contrary to the idea that Taiwan reports on each and every Chinese flight incursion, however insignificant, Trent notes that Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense actually underreports Chinese military flight incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone, writing, quote, comprehensive information on the number of yearly air defense zone intrusions or the number of yearly scrambles by Taiwanese forces are not made publicly available by the Taiwanese government, end quote. She further explains that since 2017, Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense has stopped reporting on Chinese incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone at all unless the activity is unusual in flight path or volume, as it has been repeatedly in 2021. Claim. China claims part of Taiwan's air defense zone. Bad Empanada makes these claims. What you can clearly see from this is that China claims this part of Taiwan's supposed air defense zone as their own. China clearly seems to think that this line up to here is what Taiwan's actual air defense zone is. All you need to do is look at an actual map of China's self-declared air defense zone in 2013, on screen now, to see that China's zone does not include the part of Taiwan's zone into which Chinese aircraft have been flying. This is really just basic fact-checking. In fact, as Trent observes pertinently, China's zone doesn't even include any of Taiwan's land, and also falls short of the median line which both China and Taiwan tacitly acknowledge. Claim. Chinese flights aren't interference or threats. Bad Empanada claims China's military flights are not a threat or escalation, and they are no kind of special interference. Here are his words. This is threatening Taiwan? You're telling me that this is, this is the escalation? This is not any sort of special um, interference or anything. This goes back months and months and months, maybe even longer. In contrast, China says something completely different. The Chinese Air Force describes these as, quote, island encirclement patrols, end quote, and says they are aimed at testing the Air Force's combat ability. Trent quotes a statement from China's Ministry of National Defense from 2018, which described the flights as combat training, quote, to improve the ability of China to maintain national sovereignty and territorial integrity, end quote, and to deter, quote, Taiwanese independence forces, end quote. On the 16th of May, 2018, an article in the South China Morning Post entitled China says military exercises intended to threaten Taiwan, cited a Chinese government spokesman saying China's military exercises and flights near Taiwan, quote, were intended as a direct threat to the self-governing island's government over moves Beijing sees as cementing its independence from the mainland, end quote. The government official was quoted saying, Quote, it is a strong warning to Taiwan independence separatist forces and their activities. It demonstrates our determination and capabilities to safeguard national sovereignty and territorial integrity. 
end quote. On the 17th of March 2020, an article in the Chinese news outlet Global Times explained that China's military analysts said these flights, quote, will become more frequent if Taiwan secessionist forces remain stubborn and continue their secessionist activities, end quote. The article also described one Chinese expert as saying that the aim of the flights was, quote, to let Taiwan secessionists get a clear idea of the power gap between the mainland and the island, end quote. Note that although Bad Empanada insists these flights are insignificant, do not constitute threats or interference, and are no form of escalation, the Chinese government says the exact opposite. Again, this is just a matter of basic fact-checking. Most recently, on the 6th of October 2021, Chinese Ambassador Deng Qijun stated explicitly that China's most recent military flights have the aim of warning Taiwan against any independence activity and threatening to use any means necessary to prevent independence. His tweet reads, quote, By dispatching 149 warplanes near Taiwan Island since October the 1st, the PLA sent strong warning to Taiwan secessionists and their foreign supporters. China will take all measures necessary to crush any Taiwan independence attempts, which is doomed to fail, end quote. So, according to Bad Empanada, China's military flights are not a threat or escalation and no kind of special interference. However, according to China itself, these flights are explicitly threats aimed at suppressing the Taiwanese independence movement and deterring Taiwan's government from any pro-independence activity. Here are direct quotations from just a few of China's explicit statements on the purpose of these flights. A direct threat to the self-governing island's government. A strong warning to Taiwan independence separatist forces and their activities. Let Taiwan secessionists get a clear idea of the power gap between the mainland and the island. Strong warning to Taiwan secessionists and their foreign supporters. In the past, China announced its intention to escalate these flights to increase pressure on Taiwan, and in recent years, it has done exactly that. On the 22nd of May 2020, the South China Morning Post announced that China's annual work report had, quote, hardened its rhetoric towards Taiwan, removing reference to peaceful reunification, end quote. Previously, China's work report had always cited peaceful reunification as its aim with Taiwan, and the South China Morning Post article noted, quote, observers said the change reflected the strongest stance Beijing would adopt in tackling the Taiwan issue, end quote. But maybe that just doesn't count as escalation or threat. China's incursions into South Korea and Japan's air defense zones. In all the focus on China's flights into Taiwan's air defense zone, little to no attention has been paid to China's incursions into the air defense zones of South Korea and Japan. To establish some background, let's go back to when Japan and South Korea extended their air defense zones. When Japan extended its own air defense zone so that it overlapped with Taiwan's, Taiwan made no complaint and the two governments have mutually respected each other's zones. Likewise, when South Korea extended its own air defense zone so that it overlapped Japan's, Japan raised no objection. By contrast, when China declared its own air defense zone in 2013, it did not consult its neighbors, and it deliberately defined an area which overlapped with the air defense zones of Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. Trent writes that this resulted in protests from, quote, Japanese, South Korean, and U.S. officials, end quote. An article in Chinese media outlet Global Times responded by saying that since the zone was, quote, both in line with the UN Charter and in respect of relevant international laws and customs, end quote, China was free to establish its zone without consulting other nations. The article added, quote, Japan should know better than to continue its overreaction and learn to accept the unacceptable, end quote. Despite requests from South Korea that China modify its air defense zone, 
China refused to do so. Consequently, as Trent notes, China's air defense zone is not recognized by South Korea, Japan, or the US. Ironically, Taiwan's zone is recognized by South Korea, Japan, and the US, and at least tacitly by China, whereas China's is not recognized by South Korea, Japan, or the US, though it is tacitly recognized by Taiwan. Of course, Bad Empanada does not accept that Taiwan is a real country, which means that, according to his view, China's air defense zone has no international recognition from its neighbors at all, whereas Taiwan's air defense zone is recognized at least tacitly by China and explicitly by South Korea, Japan, and the US. China exhibits its total disregard for the air defense zones of all its neighbors by repeatedly entering them at will. Trent records that since 2013, quote, China has committed more than 4,400 intrusions into the air defense zones of Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, end quote, often trespassing on all three zones in the same flight route. Trent explains that although each nation has addressed these incursions in various ways, including scrambling its own aircraft as a deterrent and, quote, discussing the issue with China in bilateral meetings, end quote, Nevertheless, quote, the issue has become a regional one impacting all three countries, end quote. China's incursion into Taiwan's air defense zone is at least comprehensible from the perspective of its modern claim that Taiwan is part of its inviolable sovereign territory. However, its deliberate repeated military flights into the air defense zones of both South Korea and Japan demonstrate its long-term territorial objectives extend far beyond Taiwan. Trent observes that in addition to combat training and intelligence gathering on the military of Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, China's flights have two additional aims. Quote, to demonstrate air power capable of protecting its territorial and security interests, and to apply coercive pressure to decouple coalitions resistant to Chinese influence in the region. End quote. These flights are indicative of China's ultimate goal of establishing geopolitical dominance in the region. However, although China records incursions into its own air defense zone, which it counts even when foreign aircraft are passing through their own zones which overlap with China's, it does not always enforce its zone with warnings and aircraft scrambles. Trent suggests that, quote, it is highly likely China never intended to fully enforce the air defense zone, and it was created for another purpose, end quote. She observes that the real motive behind China's air defense zone is, quote, exerting greater control over the East China Sea and strengthening its claims over the Japan-controlled Senkakus, end quote. Trent notes that China's air defense zone, quote, has primarily given it a justification for expanding the range of its flights, end quote, as, quote, a first step to China's gradual degradation of all air defense zones in Northeast Asia that then allowed China to pursue its regional objectives, end quote. Conclusion The Southeast Asia-Pacific region is a geopolitical hotspot contested by several powerful nations, including China, South Korea, Japan, and the U.S., out of all these nations, the U.S. has historically been the most belligerent and has at least 100 years of military intervention in the region, consistently attempting to secure and maintain its control of the area. U.S. interests in the Southeast Asia Pacific are clearly imperialist and serve only itself. Nations such as South Korea, Japan, Taiwan and the Philippines collude with U.S. military activity in the area out of their own self-interest, benefiting from the US military presence in the region. However, in light of China's explicit hostility to all of its neighbors, this is unsurprising. Out of all the nations in proximity to the South China Sea, it is China which has made the greatest territorial claims, and it is China which is the only nation encroaching on the land and maritime territory of its neighbors. China's depiction of itself as a besieged, non-belligerent and anti-expansionist nation surrounded by imperialist enemies attempting to prevent its economic development is untenable 
in light of the fact that China is a regional nuclear superpower, the second most powerful economy in the world, and is in fact steadily encroaching on the territorial and maritime claims of nearly two dozen countries. China explicitly describes its incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone as threats aimed at deterring the Taiwanese people from seeking self-determination. Every year, China also repeatedly conducts hundreds of military incursions into the air defense zones of South Korea and Japan to project its military power in the region. China currently has military bases in Djibouti, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, and Tajikistan. It aims to have at least 18 naval bases established by 2023 across Africa and the Indian Ocean, as far west as Nigeria and as far east as Papua New Guinea. Its declared intention is to establish control over the naval choke points near North Korea, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, the Seychelles and Maldives, the Gulf of Aden, Tanzania, Kenya, Mozambique, South Africa, Namibia, Angola, and Nigeria. This would also give China the ability to project military control over the world's three most important oil transit choke points in the Strait of Hormuz, Strait of Malacca, and Cape of Good Hope. China is currently involved in territorial disputes with 18 different nations, including Russia, Tajikistan, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Laos, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and the Philippines. China is also involved in maritime disputes with Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, Brunei, Myanmar, Vietnam, the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Although international law grants nations an exclusive economic zone of 200 miles from their coast, China claims 85% of the entire South China Sea, an area extending 800 miles south of its southernmost island territory and encompassing a maritime area which is a fifth the size of its own land mass and twice the size of the Mediterranean Sea. Apart from the potential natural resource deposits in the area, trade routes in this region are worth 3.4 trillion US dollars a year. Additionally, this area is also the maritime route of 80% of the crude oil imported by Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Consequently, the region is not only extremely profitable, but also a vital geopolitical position and a potential stranglehold on the economies of China's neighbors. China's claim to this maritime territory has been rejected by the United Nations and by an international tribunal in The Hague, which found no basis for it in international law. However, China has refused to recognize these decisions. In 1974 and in 1988, it seized control of contested land masses in the Paracel and Spratly Islands. In 1994, it seized Mischief Reef, and in 2012, it seized Scarborough Reef. In 2014, it moved one of its oil rigs directly within Vietnam's own exclusive economic zone. China has also used water cannons, ramming, and naval blockades to expel commercial fishing fleets from Vietnam and the Philippines from the area it claims, and has increasingly militarized its own commercial fishing fleets. China has also taken steps to establish a military presence in the disputed maritime region by creating 3,200 acres of artificial islands and installing cruise missiles and aircraft runways on them. So China is not only claiming nearly all of the South China Sea, it has also established a military presence there as an obvious deterrent to its neighbors. In view of these facts, the proposal that Taiwan is provoking or escalating conflict with China simply by insisting on its independence, or that US alliances with South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan are endangering regional safety, is questionable. If it is claimed that nations should not recognize or support Taiwanese independence out of fear of China starting a potentially nuclear war, 
then the problem is clearly with China. Finally, I'd like to thank my generous patrons, Dusty Bob, The Boots Are On, Elias Asvig, Duren Barnett, Alexander Curzon, Sean A. Young, Andy Chaos, TVLTP, Thors, Fake Name, Niels Rethelin, Judge Sabo, Matthew Simmerall, Martin T, Ben Lindquist, John Larkin, Jack C, Ezekiel Stacy, Love You More, Noah French, and Aaron Johnson. Please contact me if I ever pronounce your name incorrectly.